With his possessive tendencies leading to an unexpected breakup, Tarek Jot Singh would respond in the most horrific of ways. And this video shows how morbidly depraved he would become. It all began with love at first sight when he met nursing student Jasmine Kaur. But as their time together passed by, she noticed very concerning behaviour from her boyfriend. And with his inescapable grip, she could not break free from his control. So, what ultimately happened to Jasmine Kaur? How would Tarek Jot respond to the breakup? And what were his final actions as a free man? Welcome or welcome back to Coffeehouse Crime, folks. My name is Adrian, and today we're heading to the Australian Outback to look at the recent and horrifying case of Jasmine Kaur. Now, any murder story that involves the Australian wilderness is one of isolation, horror, and barbaric behaviour. And sadly, this story is no different. By the way, if you're new here, Coffeehouse Crime is all about true crime, strange, and chilling stories and the best way to support me is by subscribing to the channel. So, if you want to see more strange and chilling stories, then please hit subscribe now, and I may just have to give you a coffee on the house. Also, I try to respond to most comments within the first hour of my videos going live, so if you'd like to catch me for a question or just to simply say hi, remember to hit the bell notification so I don't miss it. And now, with that said, please grab yourself a coffee, pull up a seat, and get ready for the deep dive. This is the case of Jasmine Kaur. G'day folks, and welcome back to Australia, home to koalas, kangaroos, dingoes, and bloody good coffee. Of course, we can't forget the wide range of dark and deadly animals too, but for now I'm going to ignore them. For this video, we're stopping off in Adelaide, found on the southern coast of Australia. The state is home to 1.7 million residents spread across 380,000 square miles, making an average of just four people per square mile. That is a little different when compared to its capital. Adelaide itself is home to around 1.7 3 million, of course spread into a much smaller area. Being a relatively young and peaceful city, Adelaide hasn't seen many dark days made by the ways of humankind. In May of 2000, and following a dual engine failure, Wyala Airlines Flight 904 crashed into the Spencer Gulf, killing all eight on board. Though even this was an accident and by no nefarious behaviour. Now, in terms of natural disasters, Australia always has something to terrify you. In January of 2005, the Wangari bushfire claimed the lives of nine people as it burned through 200,000 acres of land, thus costing more than 100 million Australian dollars for the government. Originally home to the Kauna people, the area was first known as Tantanya. By the mid-1800s, Adelaide had established itself as a city, and nowadays, it holds a prosperous economy specialising in manufacturing, defence technology, tech and healthcare. In addition to this, the city has a thriving education system with several prestigious universities to choose from. And in the year of 2021, and amongst these students, we could find Jasmine Kaur. Growing up in India, Jasmine spent her childhood in the village of Narangar, which can be found in the Sangra district of India. Even from a very early age, Jasmine was inclined to help others, always doing what she could do to help her family. She was a kind child that grew up beside her sister, Goodmanpreet, and brother, Sukmanpreet. Sadly, her father passed away while Jasmine was just a teenager, and her loss cemented her desire to become a nurse. She hoped that, alongside her training and qualifications, she could one day care for her mother when she grew older. With this big dream in mind, she begged her mother if she could move to Adelaide, located in South Australia, so she could study nursing. Jasmine had long wanted to experience life outside of India for quite some time, and I have to say, she picked an absolutely great place to be. Wilderness and lifestyle aside, Australia has a high reputation when it comes to education. Now, her mother was reluctant to begin with, but she eventually gave in to Jasmine's desires. However, there would be one condition that she'd have to follow. She'd have to live with her aunt and uncle, who already lived in Adelaide. Jasmine happily accepted the offer, and with her application to Unisa University already approved, she was ecstatic to begin life down under. And so, saying that, she packed her bags, said her goodbyes, and boarded her flight to Australia. Jasmine found a new life and exciting world in Adelaide, and in a city full of festivals, sports, food and coffee, there were plenty of indulgences between lessons. To add to this, she also found work at an aged care facility in the city, named Southern Cross Care. And while here, she was considered to be reliable, likeable and diligent by her colleagues and patients alike. It was while studying at university that she met a young man named Tarek Jot Singh, and the two would instantly find relatability in one another. For one, they both shared an Indian 
background, but they had also both travelled to Australia to study, and by all accounts, they fell for each other fairly quickly. Now, Tarek Jot was born to his parents, Mohan and Jasphir. He grew up in Balala village, near Samrala in India, where his father was a farmer and factory worker, and his mother was a housewife who looked after the family. He had a knack for doing well in his classes, and regularly smashed his exams. Scoring 95% in the Class 10 CBSE exam, a national test administered to all pupils at secondary school, he followed that up by getting 96% in the Class 12 exam, showing an evident aptitude and ability. Tarek Jot wanted to study computer computer sciences, and having completed his initial studies, he travelled to Australia after applying for a spot at UNISA, that being the University of South Adelaide. It was in the year 2016 that he began his degree, and in between his studies, found work as a respite carer. And later that year, Jasmine would join the same university. Everything appeared to be going well when their relationship began, though over time, small cracks began to form in the sanctity of their love. At the beginning, it was not abundantly clear how or why things things fell apart but both of their parents eventually intervened. And while Tarek Jot's parents were adamant that the pair made a great couple and were headed towards a happy marriage, Jasmine's family held other reservations. Now, it really depends on which side of the story you take here, because both sets of parents have wildly different versions of events. According to Tarek Jot's parents, Jasmine tried to convince her family for their blessing in marriage, but apparently her mother, uncle, and aunt were strictly against the idea. With her family's strong financial background, they allegedly rejected the relationship, and instead pressured her to end things with Tarek Jot. As a result, he slipped into depression. They also claimed that Jasmine's family tried to marry her off to someone else, and as a result, she spiralled and even tried to take her own life. But of course, their hero son intervened to save the day. But Jasmine herself had a very different perspective at the time all of this was going on. She would complain that, although the relationship started great, Tarek Jot would become extremely controlling. According to her, he would try to limit where she could go without him, who she could spend time with, and even who she could message. According to Jasmine's mother, Tarek Jot was obsessed with her daughter and incessantly proposed marriage. And by the start of 2021, Jasmine grew exhausted from his possessive nature and decided to terminate the relationship. But instead of solving her problem, it would only make things worse. Despite the couple officially splitting up on January the 4th, 2021, it became evident that this decision was not something that her ex-boyfriend was going to accept. Tarek Jot began to harass and stalk Jasmine. He would carefully watch her online activity, followed her from her home, and even began to insult her through text messages. Speaking of messages, they were absolutely endless. Threats were being made towards her and her family, and he frequently threatened to harm himself unless she returned to him. Needless to say, she reported all of this very concerning behaviour to the police. Tarek Jot would also begin to hound Jasmine's family. But rather than give in, Jasmine provided this information and follow-up statements to the police. She highlighted to officers that, although they had previously been in a relationship for nine months, things were now over, but he was still stalking her at her workplace. Within her statement, she said, he was over-possessive. He wanted to control who I spent my time with. She further outlined that he would turn angry if she made plans to see friends, or if she went anywhere without him. And if she went through with any of these plans, he would often call her over and over again until she returned home. As a direct response to these claims, Tarek Jot was formally cautioned by Adelaide police for stalking Jasmine in February 2021. The core family hoped that an official warning from the authorities would tone down his obsessive behaviour, but sadly, they were mistaken. March the 6th, 2021. It had been one month since Tarkajot had been cautioned, and although things had settled down, Jasmine's employers at the Southern Cross care home were surprised to realise that she hadn't shown up for work. Now, Jasmine had an impeccable record when it came to work, and wasn't known to be late or absent, so this sudden tardiness perplexed and concerned her colleagues. In response, they phoned her aunt and uncle's home to see if everything was okay. Sadly, the phone call did nothing to settle their nerves, because her family had no no idea where she was either, and this sudden news immediately initiated a frantic search for the missing young woman. And with all efforts providing no result, her aunt phoned the police to report her as missing. The prospect of Jasmine simply running away seemed extremely unlikely. She loved the life that she had built in Adelaide, 
a life that was only improving now Tarek Jot was out the picture. To add to this, she even had plans to return to India for the first time in over three years, and was very excited to see her family. Without any leads, investigators turned their focus towards her ex-boyfriend, and thanks to his previous formal caution, he automatically became a person of interest. Although Tarek Jot was happy to be questioned, he denied knowing anything about her disappearance, and claimed that, on the night that she vanished, he was at home alone. Saying that, it didn't take long for his alibi to start falling apart, and by sunrise, he had changed his story. Tarek Jot now claimed that he had in fact seen Jasmine, but to his own disbelief, she had taken her own life. And rather than call the authorities, he would bury her body instead. Tarek Jot decided to conceal her body some 400 kilometers or 250 miles north of Adelaide in an area known as the Flinders Ranges. The Flinders Ranges is a mountain range that runs deep through South Australia. Located to the north of Adelaide, it contains the Bunkers Conservation Reserve and Ikara Flinders Ranges National Park. Personal side note, but traveling nearby to the Grampians earlier this year, let me tell you that nothing can be found for hundreds of miles if you really want it that way. It's an incredibly beautiful place part of Australia though. Now, if changing his story wasn't bad enough already, he would alter it a third time just hours later, claiming they had agreed to end their lives together, but he eventually chickened out. Admitting that he knew where her body could be found, investigators drove him five hours north of Adelaide to her shallow grave, and after taking a short walk from the vehicle, they discovered her remains. One thing that didn't quite add up to his story though, was that her hands were zip-tied behind her back, her feet were tied together, and she'd been blindfolded. Officers would also find her glasses, name badge from work, and shoes in a nearby bin. The police, already highly suspicious of Tarek Jot's flimsy story, began to investigate further. That is when they found the surveillance footage. Just hours before she disappeared, Tarek Jot was captured in a local Bunnings hardware shop at Mile High End in Adelaide. While there, he purchased a jerry can, some gaffer tape, gloves, a shovel, and cable ties. The surveillance footage clearly shows a relaxed and comfortable man free of any severe anxiety or distress. He was casual enough to sign the COVID declaration form and even ask an employee for assistance. Another camera would capture him making his purchase at the till before casually walking out with the perfect cover-up kit for murder. Seriously, how did nobody suss this guy out? Roughly one hour later, another camera captured him filling up his car late that evening. After seizing his phone, investigating officers would find hundreds of text messages that he had sent to Jasmine and her family in recent months. They also found two unsent text messages that he had written to Jasmine in the days before her disappearance. The first message simply said, deep inside what I feel but can't get over. And even more worryingly, the second message haphazardly said, your bad luck that I'm still alive. Cheap, wait and watch. You will get the answer. Each and every single one of you will get the answer. No surprise, Tarek Jot Singh was formally arrested and charged with the kidnapping and murder of Jasmine Kaur, charges that his family strongly denied. The prosecutor said Jasmine inhaled and swallowed soil that made its way as far as her lower esophagus. She was actively breathing and swallowing soil while she was alive. She had to have been aware in those moments of the hopelessness of her situation. The chilling details were heard in court by her grieving family and her killer's relatives. Singh's actions were cold, clinical and calculated. He was captured on CCTV, purchasing cable ties, duct tape and a shovel from Bunnings. He even tried to create an alibi, swapping cars with his flatmate and replacing the SIM card in his mobile phone. Singh disposed of some of the evidence at a rest stop on the drive back to Adelaide. He initially denied any involvement in the murder, arguing he tried to stop Jasmine from taking her own life. His lawyer said his client wasn't coping with the breakdown of their relationship. The judge imposed a mandatory life sentence. He'll set a non-parole period next month. Deanna Williams, 7 News. Following this gruesome realisation, he was held behind bars while investigators built a timeline of the events starting from the moment their relationship ended. In early March, Tarek Jot travelled to Bunnings and acquired his murderous shopping list of items. That very same evening, he borrowed his roommate's car and swapped out the SIM card in his phone. Shortly before 10pm, he abducted Jasmine from her workplace at the Southern Cross care home in North Plimpton. To this day, Tarek Jot refuses to specify precisely what happened between them afterwards, but evidence shows that Jasmine was restrained with her hands tied behind her back and her feet tied together. 
together. She was undoubtedly blindfolded, gagged, and then kidnapped in the car that he borrowed. Tarek Jot then drove nearly five hours and over 250 miles north into the Flinders Ranges. No doubt, Jasmine would have experienced terrifying levels of anxiety during this time frame, and Tarek Jot would have had plenty of time to consider his upcoming actions. Despite these harrowing facts, he did nothing to stop his plan. He claimed that he made, quote, superficial cuts on her neck, but not enough to kill her. Jasmine was then placed in a shallow grave and buried. An autopsy later revealed that she inhaled dirt into her lungs, proving beyond any doubt that she was still alive when he put her in the ground. And even worse, he likely knew that she was still breathing when he began to shovel dirt on top of her. To add to his barbaric behavior, he then drove away, disposed of her items in a bin nearby, and returned to Adelaide. When the details of this case became public, it's no surprise that there was national outrage towards Tarek Jot, especially from Jasmine's family and friends. Now, despite initially pleading not guilty, he would later change his plea to guilty just weeks before his trial was scheduled. Facing a mandatory life sentence behind bars, his defense team tried to gain leniency by framing it as a so-called crime of passion. The defense further stated that his judgment was gravely impaired at the time because he had mentally collapsed following the relationship breakdown. Saying that, the prosecution rejected these claims, and further highlighted that premeditation was involved in the days leading up to her murder. The prosecution further described the murder as not efficient, and highlighted that Jasmine had been made to suffer. They further highlighted that the cause of her death was quoted as active inhalation and ingestion of soil. It's hard to wrap my head around the absolute terror that she must have felt, still being conscious and also realizing what was being done to her. The prosecution described the killing as having an uncommon level of cruelty, and a killing that was committed as an act of vengeance or an act of revenge. The prosecution also noted that Tarek Jot's refusal to elaborate on many aspects of the crime, despite now having pled guilty, showed a distinct lack of remorse and accountability. The results were irrefutable, but Tarek Jot has declined to confirm how she died, how the crime scene was prepared, and how she was placed into it. During his sentencing, the judge stated, I am unable to find words to adequately describe how Miss Cower must have felt when you placed her in the grave and buried her. I cannot describe the terror she must have been experiencing when she realized you were burying her alive. What is clear is that the way you chose to kill Miss Cower was callous in the extreme. The judge also noted that every aspect of the murder and how it was planned, executed, and cleaned up after indicated a ruthless level of premeditation. As a result, on July the 5th, 2021, Tarek Jot Singh was sentenced to life imprisonment with a minimum term of 23 years behind bars. Coincidentally, the same time given in our last case of Karen Buckley. By the time he will be eligible for parole, Tarek Jot will be in his 40s. And should he ever be released from prison, it is likely that he will be deported back to India. It's no secret that love is a complex emotion, especially in the face of an abrupt end. And with nowhere for that built up love to go, it can sometimes turn into feelings of hate and rage. But Tarkajot responded in the worst possible of ways. He decided that if he couldn't have Jasmine, nobody could. The degree to which he stalked her is frankly terrifying. Jasmine did everything she could by reporting his behavior, and even the authorities did a pretty good job in cautioning him too. Tarkajot's level of premeditation is excessive as well. He purchased supplies, rented a vehicle, pulled out a SIM card, and had several hours along the way to think about what he was doing. The man had so many opportunities to change his mind, and all of this signifies the depths of his calculative behavior. His callous indifference towards a person that he claimed to love is horrifying. He kidnapped her, threw her in a car, and then left her dying in a hole. There is a tremendous level of cold-blooded calculation and complete disregard for human life here, and it only gets worse the more you think about it. There are no mitigating factors, no rationale, no logic, and no hope for redemption. The horror that Jasmine faced at the hands of her ex-boyfriend is beyond the worst that anyone could imagine, and for the relatives and friends left behind, a vast void now remains. In the aftermath of her daughter's death, Jasmine's mother said, I regret the day that I said yes to sending my daughter to Australia. I miss her every single day. There was no one to rescue her, and she spent her last hour on this earth with the worst of humanity. Jasmine is gone, and I am heartbroken. She was a precious little girl. 
Jasmine Kaur was only 21 years old when she died, and like any other young person of that age, she had hopes and dreams for an independent and promising future. She took great steps to obtain a good education, working in a job that she loved and studying to become qualified in another caring profession. Her family said that she was endlessly loving and would help anyone in need, and even her choice of degree in nursing was to care for her mother correctly, should she ever need it in the future. Sadly, Jasmine had all of these chances stolen from her, and her entire future was robbed by a man that became dangerously infatuated with her, despite Jasmine's desperate attempts to break up. While her friends and family are justifiably angry at what was taken from them, they also remember what Jasmine brought into their lives and the lives of others. Members of her family made the long journey out to Flinders Ranges, where Jasmine's life was taken from her. They laid flowers and paid respects. And while that place can hold nothing but painful memories, it was important in their long journey of healing. Perhaps their ambition was to bring love and compassion to a place that only held cruelty and horror, to bring joy through their memories of her, where her future was horribly taken. Through the agony of a life callously taken so young, Jasmine's family continued to celebrate the good that she brought them, and through this video, we will strive to do the same. You know, the strange thing is, I find this case eerily similar to that of our most recent story covered only three days prior. Jasmine and Karen both travelled abroad to study in the health industry, both fell victim to terrible men, and both men received 23 to life. And I'll say it all the same again, I hope that Tarek Jot's time behind bars does not go quickly, and when he does eventually face parole, the judge won't go easy. Anyway folks, I think that pretty much covers our case today, I've covered all the details I know. So, what are your thoughts about this case? And do you think Tarek Jot received enough time behind bars? As always, please share your opinions in the comments section down below. To add to that, if you want to follow me on my adventures or see additional media on these true crime cases, then please check out my Twitter, Instagram, and of course, Patreon. Though the best way to support me and this channel is by subscribing, so if you haven't yet, please consider doing so. Now, I did try and threaten you by saying if you don't, I'll leave your coffee cold, but a few of you do seem to like iced coffee, so... I guess that one backfired. Anyway, folks, that is once again the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, I'll see you again very soon for another video. But until that moment arrives, remember to look after yourself, look after each other, and of course, stay safe. Thank you, and goodbye.